Hello Aquarius friends, welcome to my February 2020 horoscope report for you. This wonderful month full of more than double the sweet aspects compared to the salty ones, setting the tone for the month to bring sweet, happy things from the past. We still have some eclipse residual coming in, so those huge life changes that either you are experiencing or that you're witnessing other people experiencing or holding space for them, more information may come along the lines of the eclipse um, experiences and um, clarification or a continuation of this storyline is very likely in February. Also of major note this month is that February starts this wall of personal planet retrogrades that I've been talking about forever. If you've been following my channel, you know that I'm very big into helping you understand how the personal planet retrogrades affect us and how to best use the energies when the tides are coming in. Retrogrades are amazing times. I think there's a misconception about that retrogrades are coming, so that means it's bad. It only creates conflicts if you're trying to push against the tide. If you can learn to recognize when you're forcing and you need to back off a little, and then you do that and you take actually the opportunity to relax or to kind of just like put it on cruise control, then you may start to really enjoy these retrograde cycles. I always call the retrograde times a period of time where we have woven our web and now we wait for the food to come in. December and January was the active web weaving time. And if you're watching this in January, then you're still in the midst of the time to weave your web. Okay, but once we get like after that first few days into the first week of February, it turns back into shifting, you know, into a lower gear and just sort of flowing with things as they come. So for Aquarius, we have birthdays. If you watched my report in January, then I already started to wish you happy birthday, but the rest of you will now have your birthday. So happy birthday to my Aquarius friends. And if you're watching for your Aquarius moon, Aquarius rising, then yay for you all too, because when the sun crosses over those points in your chart, it's still like a rebirth. Um, a new clean slate and an energizing of the Aquarius forces in your life. When the sun gets back into the same position that it was at when you were born, this is called a solar return. The sun in the sky represents what we desire. So birthday wishes come from this, this portal that is open from these sun um, degrees locking together opens this portal for your desires. So make sure you take advantage of your wishing. And even if it's your moon or Aquarius or moon in Aquarius or rising Aquarius, you can still take advantage of setting intentions, reclarifying, um, reinstating something that you are, you know, insisting from the universe or asking for from the universe. You can do that at this time. Definitely search for my video, Making Wishes Come True, Annie. If you just search for Making Wishes Come True, Annie, you'll find it. And this is where I explain how you can make the most of your birthday wishes time and some other astrological power periods. So you basically write your 10 wishes down, say them out loud, and feel them as if they've already come true. Okay, so we have Mars continuing to move through the sign of Sagittarius, and that's going to be for part of the month. And this is continuing to give a boost to everything that you're trying to do. Okay, when you have Mars, which rules the active force of our how we use our energy, um, accentuating your placement, it's like giving you more get up and go, it's giving you more impetus, it's giving you more reason to do something. And even though I've said that December and January are like this time for active web weaving, when we're in the retrograde cycle, we can do touch-ups to our web, you know, fine-tuning, cleaning up of it, um, and, and working in the backdrop. And that's fine. It's just like the big reveals, the big launches, the big decisions, things like that. You'll have more clarity and more oomph in the December, January timeframe or in the direct timeframe, which is what this is. Um, then as we go into February, where there'll be more questions, more internal process, more going back over old things. Um, so you may find that into February, the energy of like pushing things outward with this Mars force, starts to bring your attention closer to home. So like cleaning up piles of things, cleaning out your garage, um, taking stock of the space in your home and see, seeing if you're using it in the most efficient way. This is a theme that is a long-term theme with outer planets in Capricorn, but with Jupiter and Capricorn, it's kicking this up an extra notch. And for um, 
Aquarius placements, Jupiter in Capricorn is accentuating your 12th house. Now at this period of time, this is actually true for all Aquarius placements. Again, if you've been watching my reports for a while, you know that I, I differentiate out depending on where you're at in the 30 days of the sign or the 30 degrees of the sign. Sometimes those of you at the end or, or later on will have these um, outer planet transits in different areas of the chart than the other, um, you know, the earlier placements. But because we have this um, interesting um, Capricorn or this interesting Jupiter uh, phase, usually, you know, the planets go in and they're going direct and they go backwards and they go direct. But this cycle of Jupiter and Capricorn, Jupiter is getting almost completely through the whole Capricorn sign right from the time it started in December until like May it gets almost to the end of the sign before it goes retrograde, which means that you all towards the end of the sign who usually wouldn't be getting this 12th house Jupiter representation, you're getting it. You're getting it now. Um, so, and it will get deeper over the, the months after, you know, February, March, April, etc. So what that means is there's this um, focus from many different placements in your chart that come from the inner your inner world. Okay, so the retrogrades are bringing you inward. The um, placements in your personal chart are bringing you inward, and this can have things to do with like working in the backdrop, someone working on your behalf. It can be um, going through like things from an estate, things people left you, things from the past, things in your attic. You know, and this is a time when you can really find some really great riches and they can be financial riches and they can also be other kinds of riches where you discover answers to mysteries, where you, um, you know, look within yourself and you heal things. This can be a time of massive transformation and massive breakthroughs. And it's definitely going to be a time of facing your fears. Okay. So, um, if you have something unresolved, then it's very likely that this retrograde cycle through the whole year is going to be bringing these things up. But I see this as a positive thing because anything swept under the rug at the retrograde time gets the, the rug gets pulled up and everything's just flying in the air and you sort of have to deal with it. But by dealing with it, you can improve everything in your life. Okay, so we've got the star goddess Juno who is beckoning you to adventure. This is true for you earlier placements. So basically January born, this is happening right at the beginning of February. And the later you are on the sign, the later into February, this is going to start to take effect. The star goddesses have been whispering to me for a long time to have their messages known. And so you will notice over time that I'm going to be bringing out this divine feminine voice in astrology more and more, because if you haven't noticed, um, almost all of the archetypal energies that we use in Western astrology as our typical work are all male archetypes. So um, these, these star goddesses want to speak as well. And, and one of them that is speaking to you now is the star goddess Juno. And so she wants you to take some chances. Now this is interesting timing because like I said, you know, in the retrogrades, we want to have a backup plan, know that things might be short term, not necessarily like put all of our eggs in one basket, but it can be an amazing time for experimentation. Okay, so February for Aquarius is a time when experimenting, trying things on, taking some calculated risk or low, um, low risk risk, you know, um, where, where you're not betting your whole house on it or, or something like that, and where some of this um, risk wants to come in is in relationships. Okay, so in order to go deeper into your relationships, Juno is asking you to open up your perspective a little bit, to have a little bit more freedom in some areas that might be really rigid. And this can have to do with your romantic relationships, your business relationships, your friendships. And this transit also could indicate meeting somebody notable through travel or meeting somebody notable from a different country. And again, this notable person could be a romantic interest, could be a business um, person, a client, or could be somebody that turns out to be key in something for you. So if you feel or hear this beckoning to take a trip, um, to have an adventure in your own town, to 
start a course of study that seems crazy and outlandish, you know, to um, do some things that seem like they deviate from how you usually do them, then follow that flow because that's what she's asking you to do. And what she's leading you into is this um, potential for broader horizons and this potential for enriched relationships. Um, and this intention, this attention to like, let's see, bonding with other people. Aquarius energy is very um, able to amuse itself. So sometimes you could be aloof to other people or seem aloof to other people because you can like roll all your happy, you're just like, you're fine, you're contained here. So in this period of time, because of this transit, just be open to people trying to connect with you and see what happens. Um, you know, try not to make any like life-changing decisions unless that happens to be in the flow. It might be from the eclipse, but in the retrograde time, remember that we don't always have all the information. So information is coming in now. You're being coaxed on this path of adventure, this path of doing something different, but it's likely going to evolve. And what you think it's doing now is definitely going to change. So the more you can be flexible, the better. So travel might come up is the point also. So you have Venus starting to aspect your second house of money. Okay, again, this is for you January born. This is starting right at the beginning of the month. For the February born Aquariuses, this is going to come to you as well in the week as the weeks of February pass and you get into the middle and end. You know, this is going to become more of a theme the later you are in the sign. When Venus, which rules the second house, um, also rules money, also rules love, comes to the second house, it can brighten your financial picture. So look for um, invoices to get paid, look for ideas you had in the past to start to work out, look for little boosts to your money situation, compliments of Venus. Now for those of you who are February born Aquariuses, before Venus gets to that second house, in the earlier parts of February, it's going to still be in your first house. And this can make you more persuasive with things that you have to say. So if you have to ask for a raise, if you have to um, you know, get someone's approval or agreement for something, especially if it's something you've asked for before, okay? Because remember this tilt to the past. If you asked for a raise before, you can go back to your boss and say, remember that thing we were talking about? And kind of like reopen the discussion. Uh, so that th this time is better for things that you've already been working on than new things, but you can follow your flow if there's something new and it seems to be low stakes and you're feeling it. Something else that Venus in the first house can be good for, and again, this is more for you um, February born Aquarius, but if you're watching early, like in January, you January born Aquariuses will have this same aspect, okay? So January for um, the January born and February for the February born, Venus is going to be in this first house, which can also make you look better. So if you have to take some photographs for something for work or you wanna do nice family photos, sometimes Venus in the first house can add to the energy that you have that may show up well in pictures. So that's an interesting thing that I've seen manifest. There's a beautiful aspect between Jupiter and Neptune this month, and this is a rare one. It's going to happen February 20th, then it's going to happen July 27th, then it's going to happen October 14th. This brings together the energy of expansion, but in a practical way, because Jupiter, the energy of expansion is in Capricorn. So business opportunities, ways to solidify your future, um, ways to use things from your past to make your future brighter. That could include help from a father figure, help from an authority figure, help from a boss. Um, and this also blends with people working behind the scenes. So. This energy of people working behind the scenes for your good is very strong for all of the signs, but there are some special pieces of it that make it extra for Aquarius placements. So that transit actually covers most of the month because even though it happens on the 20th, it's an outer planet transit, which means it's longer lasting. So the weeks before and the weeks after could bring more harmony, more peace. And this is just one of the sweet aspects. As I started out telling you before, even though the eclipses may be having a little bit of dramatic, you know, residual, this month has more than double the sweet aspects than the challenging ones. There's only five aspects that are distributed throughout the month that um, 
you know, are, are have like little bumps along the way. By the way, if you would like a written version of the transit report where I put the actual aspects, all the dates, what the aspects are and what you can expect from them one month early in your inbox, then definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. Plus you'll also get my 28 day virtual coaching program for free when you sign up for the newsletter. Um, but the, this uh, write up and the February write up is going to be extra special because I have a bonus retrograde um, piece of it to help prepare you for the retrogrades for the year. So in any case, um, this is just one of the sweet aspects that are happening, but it's a big one and it lasts longer than the other aspects. Okay, so there has been in, in recent years, some ruckuses to your financial sector from when Uranus was there. Now, those of you who are like the January born Aquariuses and like the first um, week and a half or so, um, maybe even up to, yeah, we'll say about 10 days or so into February, um, you've had that ruckus of Uranus move into your third house. But those of you towards the end of the sign, you have a little bit longer where Uranus is sort of bringing the potential for surprises in your income for better and worse. So jostling around, money coming from nowhere, you know, money going out unexpectedly. You know, over time for the you late degree people at, towards the end, that's going to start to settle down. But what we're working with now for the rest of you and then coming soon for the late, late degree people is this, um, this jostling in your communication sector. Okay, so people acting unpredictably and you communicating unpredictably uh, for better and worse is, is basically a feature here. So with this, you might wind up finding some ways of expressing yourself that are new and very fulfilling. This can also have to do with connections to the spirit world, you know, through guides and other messengers. I've seen this happen where all of a sudden, you hear things speaking to you that weren't speaking to you before. It's like, light, you know, Uranus is like a lightning bolt where it's like you get shocked. Um, but it can also put extra pressure on your respiratory system and your nervous system. So you might need to be taking like some extra supplements for your nervous system or um, take better care of your respiratory system because it's putting pressure in those areas. So in general, a very exciting month full of awesome opportunities, impetus, places where you can be taking important actions behind the scenes. You can be accepting in goodness that wants to come to you. There's a lot of harmony in many of the placements for your placements and um, really sweet aspects. So those are the main things that I have on my mind. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to check out my astrology blog. I have tons of astrology blogs, including lots of blogs about these retrogrades that we have starting now. Um, and the full moon and the new moon, how to make the most of those. If you want to be a professional astrologer, go to beastropro.com, beastropro.com, and you can see my Become a Professional Astrologer course, formerly known as my Astrology Apprenticeship Program, where I can take you from ground zero to professional astrologer. And if you don't want to do it professionally and you want to know just for your own purposes, it's equally as perfect for that. So you can see more there. That's also on my website. Remember when you sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com, you get the free write-up in your um, inbox and you get my 28-day virtual coaching program for free. Um, if you want more stuff from me, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. I do written horoscopes a month early, plus astrology for wellness blogs and all kinds of other um, healthy lifestyle blogs there. All the links that I'm giving you, by the way, are underneath in the video in the notes too. I have launched my new school called Luminous Life Multiversity, and you can go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com, to enroll in the school for free. And when you are enrolled in the school, you can access the free courses. And of course, you can access you know the tuition-based ones for the tuition. But over time, I'm going to be putting more and more free courses out there. So you might want to get in on that so that as we have more free courses in there, then you can... Um, benefit from those. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.